Hey, hi, hello, friendos. So it's been a hot second <laughs> since I've done this, um, like a really, really long time. And that's because I have been super depressed and anxious and don't know what to do with my life. And also, <laughs> um, I've been kind of deciding like what I want this channel to be and like who I want my like brand to be. And um, I've been working on vlogs with my boyfriend and um, I've actually started writing my blog. Um, but I kind of do want it to be this like all encompass, all encompassing um, thing under me. And I've, I, as you can see, like I'm no longer Olivia G. I'm my name, Lauren Gandy. Hello. Um, and I've decided that as much as this has always been kind of just like my way of giving advice to like the void, the internet, um, and sort of documenting my personal growth and my journey. Um, I feel like a lot of that kind of centers on the subject that I'm going to be talking about today. So this is going to be probably a multi-part series and I'll take time and discuss other things. Like my entire brand isn't going to be the subject that I'm talking about today that I'm avoiding until I launch into that aspect. Um, but that is going to be like a big part of this now. Um, so I already know that this is not going to be everyone's jive. So, um, for that, sorry. Uh, but it is a really big part of who I am and my current journey. So I want to make sure that I'm being authentic to that and talking about something that I feel like I can kind of provide value on. Um, so that being said, I want to talk about Christian deconstruction. So if you don't know, and um, honestly, the last time I filmed these vlogs, like I feel like TikTok culture hadn't like fully permeated everything or like maybe it was just starting to. I'm pretty sure my last um, post to this channel was about unlearning, about talking about like racism, Christianity and all that kind of stuff that had been happening in the world. Um, so this is kind of following that vein just because I feel like it's pretty much everything that's happening right now in the world. Um, and especially with me. Uh, Christian deconstruction is obviously like a very small part of that, but I think in America, a good portion of people grew up in the church, now have grown up and a lot of them have left the church. I mean, ultimately this is gonna be different for every person. And I think that the end result will be different for each person. But um, what really made me, I mean, I've been doing this for ages, but like what really made me wanna talk about it was there's currently this trend on TikTok um, where you show yourself before and after religious deconstruction. So um, I'll show a few of those clips now. New challenge, show yourself before and after religious deconstruction. But basically, uh, a lot of people have either deconstructed their faith and decided to leave it or deconstructed it and decided to stay. I'm really hoping that more people than not deconstruct and decide to stay because I love um, spirituality and faith and I think systems of faith provide a really great lens at looking in the world and everything I say at least in these first few videos as I try to sort of document my deconstruction are going to be colored by that desperation and need to stay. I know that that's not a reality for everyone. Some people are going to deconstruct and leave. Um, I hope that I don't <laughs> and uh, part of deconstruction means kind of peering off that cliff's edge and deciding to jump and hoping you're you're gonna land somewhere and not just continue to fall. I don't know if that's a great analogy but that's kind of where I'm at. Um, so let's just let's take this first video and just make it completely and wholeheartedly 
self-centered. It's just going to be about me. So where I'm at now (laughs) versus where I was before. So now um, I have a really hard time calling myself a Christian and, and being a part of the church. I am at a point right now where I really don't like the church. Um, I, I view it extremely critically and like, this is hard to admit because part of deconstruction means like analyzing why you do things and why you believe things and like what's real and what you're going to keep and what you're going to throw away. And one of the things that I, I've been really lucky in that I was really not raised in a toxic Christian household. Like it was not authoritarian. It was not wholeheartedly religious. Like we were very secular. But one thing I really was impressed upon was like going to church regularly. And I have not been going to church regularly, partly because of the pandemic, but also partly because just my current church is not really jiving with me. Um, And that's really hard and um, I miss it and it's weird and it's weird to talk about it, but it's important. So that's what this is. Um, But where I'm at now is I, I prefer to call myself like a Jesus follower or like a liberal Christian or a progressive Christian. Like if I have to use the word Christian, like I just don't like, because if I call myself a blanket Christian, there's a whole group that I'm accepting or like lumping myself in with that I do not identify with that I do not want to be a part of um whereas before it was a lot easier for me to be like I'm a Christian I like that's my my I am a religious practicing Christian this is so nerve-wracking uh so that's kind of where I'm sitting where I'm comfortable sort of it's very uncomfortable if I'm being honest um because I'm still involved in religious community Um, like I'm in a Bible study and it's so awkward because I'll sit there and I'll, I'll feel fine, but I also don't feel fine. Like there's aspects of it that like, I'm like, I feel so different. Um, and it's like, no one really knows. You just know what's going on in your head. So it's just awkward. I'm, I'm really struggling a little bit with my identity and I don't even have that much trauma or anything to unpack. So like my heart goes out to anyone who is in the same place as me. Um, and has more to like figure out. Um, but that's kind of what I really mainly wanted to talk about today was like the difference between like those videos, because I am not a part of the LGBT community. I think that there's a big aspect of this deconstruction that really, really affects particularly LGBTQ plus people. Um, because the church has this narrative that they're not welcome, which is completely contrary to what I believe as a follower of Christ and why I don't want to lump myself in with Christians. Um, And I'm not going to get into any doctrine at all in this video. This is just, I'm just opening this video with, this is the first real documented part of my channel dive into like religious deconstruction. The purpose of deconstruction is like I said earlier to like find the things that you want to accept from your religious practice versus what you're going to discard. Um, part of deconstruction is that you are simultaneously taking apart while putting back together. Uh, that's why it's called deconstruction because you're dismantling, but you're also constructing. So there's reconstruction too, I think. Um, and some of my fears that I expressed in it were that at the end of this process, which I will probably be lifelong, Um, I'm worried that I won't have anything. Um, and I'm trying really hard to maintain what I, what I want and what I find beneficial from my faith practice. Um, I also want to say off the bat that this is very distinctly Christian. Uh, any sort of person of faith can have this experience. It's a religious deconstruction. Like that's what we're talking about. Um, and I watched this really great interview that I'll try to link in the chat below. Um, I'm going to be sharing a lot of resources now. Like that's going to be a big part of this because like I said, I'm documenting my journey and my journey is colored by all of these things. So I'm going to be linking to a few TikToks. I'm going to be linking to a couple of conversations. The conversation I'm mentioning and thinking of right now 
is um, Curtis Connors' interview with At Goddess Grey, who I already followed on Instagram and love and appreciate. Um, and that was a really awesome conversation that I was stoked to hear. I hope that the next few years are absolutely 100% colored by conversations like that. Um, also, the video of Rhett and Link, I shared it to my Instagram story um, where they were doing their deconstruction a year later because last year they put out um, a few podcast episodes about their journey of Christian deconstruction and how they are now agnostic. Rhett posted a clip, or I saw a clip on TikTok of Rhett saying, um, I'll just put it in. YouTubers who have this big audience that has a lot of kids in it are causing these crises of faith to happen all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and that in turn led to a lot of people talking about how churches and parents need to do a better job to train and educate young Christians to protect them from people like me and you, right? Yeah. Um, I have an alternative theory about why so many young people are leaving the church because they are leaving the church like never before. I, I, I mean it, I say this out of love and respect because I do believe that there is hope for the church. Your kids are not leaving the church because you didn't train them enough. Your kids are leaving the church because you train them well enough to develop a sense for truth and justice. You let them read the words of Jesus and they got it. And they've recognized that the church doesn't seem to be interested in those words. They're not leaving because they don't know the truth, they're leaving because they do. Which really, 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 really resonated with me. And um, all of those things have happened in the last few weeks that made me wanna do this. Um, I've already been thinking about it and this is me, like I said, jumping off the cliff and doing it. Um, it's gonna be really messy. It's gonna be really um, emotional. Uh, but I wanted to, I want to put it out in the universe because I want other people to hear my side. If I were to do one of those videos, which I might, it's not going to look that different, but, um, I wouldn't have changed that much, but internally I've changed a lot. And, um, I think that it's, it's just the fact that I don't, I don't have any like trauma from this. This is really just a like what resonates with my soul kind of thing. Like my deconstruction is wholly based on when I read the words of Christ in the Bible, nothing about him or his character or what I believe his movement is about is even on the same frequency of conservative white evangelical Christianity. It, it's so completely polar opposites. They have to have been reading a different book, but apparently they weren't. Um, they're reading the same one as me and it doesn't make any sense to me. And this, the way that I believe in Christ now is how I've always believed in him. I've never believed him to be an exclusionary type of guy that is so not who he is. And that's always been a part of my faith. It's now my like deconstruction process is just deconstructing my role in the church, I think, because I don't see any of the problems that I take issue with as a Jesus thing. They're a, they're an institutional thing. Um, but I do think that progressive Christians or whatever you choose to identify as post this, um, are not part of the mainstream. Like I would say that the other viewpoint is what is popularly understood as what it is to be Christian. And I want to completely erase that type and that, that person from, uh, from the, from the zeitgeist. Like it's not, <laughs> it doesn't even make sense to me. I don't know where I'm going with that. But basically, uh, I just wanted to point or talk about the the differences that I see in in those comparisons between like pre deconstruction me and post deconstruction me. Like physically, I look no different. Spiritually, I think a lot differently, but also not. I don't even know how to talk about it. Like this is such a weird process because it's. It's been so much introspection and to suddenly turn that like verbal and like talk about it, I just can't do it all in one video. So this is just gonna be a big old mess of the first 
And once I get this one out into the world, I'll be able to like break down things better, I think, and like tackle them from that point. Uh, like I said, there's gonna be a bunch of resources in uh, the description below. Um, if you watch all of this, I love you so much. Thank you for coming along with me. I'm so open to questions and conversation all the time. I love talking. I'm an Enneagram 4-5. Uh, so, <laughs> like I said, uh, feel free to chat me. Um, but I hope that by documenting this, it'll help me. It'll help someone else. And um, it'll be able to provide a resource and something to look back on when hopefully I figure out what the heck is happening in the world and in my heart and soul. <laughs> uh, so as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you liked this video, tap the like button. If you don't, go ahead and give it a dislike. I know that this isn't gonna, this is not gonna work for everybody. I know they're not gonna like it, um, but I think it's important and it's the most authentic I could possibly be, so. That's what's important to me. Thank you for watching. I love you and I'll see you in the next one.